Aloha. Welcome to Experience Hawaii Life Histories, a podcast series in partnership with Hawaii Public Radio and Hawaii Council for the Humanities, featuring excerpts from the archive of over 800 interviews of Hawaii women and men at the University of Hawaii Manoa Center for Oral History in the Department of Ethnic Studies. The history of women at work in Hawaii goes through different stages in the settlement and development of the islands. In the early part of the 20th century, pineapple was becoming a larger part of Hawaii's economy, and women were a big part of that story. The Center for Oral History at the University of Hawaii at Manoa spoke with a number of women who worked in pineapple in the early and middle part of the 1900s, from the fields to the cannery. And here are some of their stories. Motoe Nihei was born in 1904 in Iwate Prefecture, Japan. Her family immigrated to Kipahulu, Maui when she was nine years old. Her father taught at a Japanese school and her mother worked at the plantation store. The family moved to Molokai and Motoe married an independent pineapple grower. She had six children, but the depression forced them out of pineapple growing. In 1937, they moved to Wahiwa where she worked in the pineapple fields during the season and did laundry the rest of the year. Why did you go to work? Well, because I, I have six of children eh? with only my husband's income. Those days was just a little. So I said, well, instead of staying home, I think I better go out there and help him and get some uh, spending money for the children. Yeah. That would be a little easy for us. Yes. Yeah. What was your first job in the field when you started in 1937? Cut the crown and pack in the box. That's the only job those days. You cut the crowns off after the men had Yeah, after the men the carry box. out, we cut the crown and pack in the box, uh, graded number one, number two. Before the war, yeah. the only job you did was cutting the crown. Uh-huh. Okay, uh -huh. now, yeah. after you, after the war, yeah. 41, and you, your job became more regular. Yeah. Uh, what kind of jobs did you do? Well, we went uh, uh, hoeing, cutting the weeds, uh, and uh, that was the main one. And then when the pig, uh, pig season comes, we go out, pick pineapple, carry with the bag. So you carried a uh, canvas over your yeah, canvas. shoulder? Yeah, they provide the canvas. Huh? How heavy was it? I mean, how many pines could you put in? Ah, there's uh, 12 used to go in a box. We we used to pick about 14, 15, carry in the bag, come out. So 14, 15 pineapples would be, do you remember how heavy it was? I just can't explain how heavy it was. It was really heavy. <laughs> Were there some ladies who, who had to carry less? Yeah, some less, you know, some they carry only about four or five. Did you ever compete with the men? Try huh? to carry as much as the men? Did? No, no. Can you try but you cannot. The men are real smart, they get the technique I tell you. Mm. Yeah. Did they ever uh yell at you or tell you to hurry up? Oh the men folks I uh, we are on this side of the road, they are on the other side of the road, picking the pineapples. When we live on the center place, they yell at us, it says, come on, go pick all your pineapples. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we get so tired, the center part, we pick and throw them on the other side. And they said, what are you doing over there? You pick all your pineapple. you carry all your pineapple. <laughs> mm -hmm. But most of the uh, Filipi was Filipinos, huh? They are real good to us. Oh, the yeah. men? Mm -hmm. How about the Lunas? Were they watching you? Oh, yeah, they watch you, but they won't say anything. They know how hard the job is. So. When you were doing this type of work, mm -hmm. what did you think about? Uh, I, I used to think, well, well, I have to sweat up all like this. I say, I'm not going to let my children do this kind of job. Yeah. Helen Barnes was the fourth of 15 children born to full-blooded Hawaiian parents on Molokai in 1907. At the age of three, her family sent her to Sacred Hearts Convent on Oahu, and then she moved on to Sacred Hearts Academy, graduating in 1927. She started working at the Hawaiian Pineapple Company as a trimmer, 
working the night shift in summer and day during the off-season. She also played music at Schofield Barracks, danced in a taxi dance hall, and worked in a coffee shop. She got married, had four children, and moved to Chicago. Eventually, she divorced and came back to Hawaii, where she worked at Hawaiian Pine from time to time until she retired in 1973. After you graduated, yeah. uh, you started to work at Hawaiian Pine, yeah? Not right off the bat. I went home, and then from home, I came here. I didn't want to stay in Molokai, so I came here and I stayed with my uncle. Then when I had my two cousins, the twins, they were working in the cannery. So they told me, why don't I go with them? So I said, it's hard. They said, no, a lot of fun. That's when I went. Did you need to work? No. It's just, you know, get out. Yeah. How? And meet people, you know, and then she, they told me that good fun working in the cannery. Mm -hmm. So I went. How did you get the job? It was easy in them days. You just go and say you want to apply for a job. Okay, put your name down. You're hired. Yeah. But in them days, that the camera was very small. It wasn't big like this. The job was okay. But didn't a lot of people apply? Yeah, okay. but um, it's not like before, because nothing, it was small, you know. So they need trimmers, but some of them don't want to be trimmers. So I do trimming because it's easier. Could you do the work without thinking about it? Could yeah, you yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. I, I could be talking and, uh, you know, and work. You put it down and get another one, you talk. And we joke, you know, you know, or we sing. What kind of song? Any kind. Like, uh, uh, in them days was um, China, always moon, you know, all those, uh, <laughs> Bad by Blackbird, and, and sing Hawaiian songs. And Would that be like a whole table full of people singing? Yeah, we all, 12 of us, you know, there to keep awake, you know. Sometimes you would be tired. No, at least I sleep, you know, I sleep good, but... In my young days, I hardly slept. Mm. After, after I get through working, I either go taxi dance, and when I get through, we sit down and talk. Sit down in the in the restaurant. In them days, the restaurants don't close. All. They're open all through the night. So we sit there and shoot the breeze, the breeze, or oh, rush home, get close, go to the cannery, take a bath, and then start to work. You said you took a bath there. Yeah, so but after shower, work. yeah, shower. Did a lot of ladies do that? Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they don't go straight home. <laughs> oh. See, all of us, us, we all take a shower. And then we roam around the town in them days. <laughs> in them days, we, nobody bother us. Would you say that your best friends were cannery workers? Cannery workers, that's right. They weren't your friends before you started working no. at the cannery? No. You make friends. Oh, yes, make friends. Especially when we work on that, on our same table, so that's how we get together. And then if we separated, if we hold seat for each other. But if the four lady said, no, you can't sit, you better go, because the, the head four lady going to take you away, mm -hmm. see. But our our four lady always had seat for us. I make friends, mm -hmm. got to. <laughs> got to, you, to mingle with them, you know, especially those new hands, you know, who things I used to feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. So... The only way to get along is to make friends. Ida Kanakoa Millis was born in Nahiku Village on Maui in 1913. When she was 14, she went to work as a family maid. The next year, she married John Millis and had the first of her seven children. After the start of the Second World War, the family moved to Honolulu, and in 1946, Ida became a trimmer at the Hawaiian Pineapple Company. She worked during the strike, but left afterwards. She returned to work the following year and retired in 1975. I started work 1946. In the beginning, the name was Hawaiian Pine. It was in Dole. So I went to the unemployment office and Moon Chang was a person that hires whoever wants to work in a cannery. Well, when I went there, he hired me as a trimmer. Why did you decide to work at that time? I was working, my last job was at Kaluela School. Uh -huh. I wasn't happy working there, so I quit. Uh -huh. And I, I met some of my friends, they said, because Canary had a lot of women you get associated with, and uh, you have a lot of fun. 
And that's the reason why I went with to the Camry. I want to ask you um, what you did during the first um, pineapple strike in 47. Can you tell me what happened? Oh, in 47 when it started, I didn't know anything. We were walking, going to, to work, my daughter and I, and we met these friends of ours that were in the union. They passed us, we didn't say anything. We reached at the cannery. We didn't cross the street. We seen this picket line, you know. We stand and we just wondering, what is this? Then the foreman comes across and says, who wants to work? I say, okay, I want to go work. My daughter and I stepped in. We went. They took us through the line. They didn't do anything. But uh, we went in. I went in. My daughter and I, oh, it was really a jam. Mm. Mm. What do you say was a jam? Because all the members, they stayed out. Only the scab, you know, like us and like some few others working there. And when we went down to the table, there was no poor lady, very few workers. So the management were running here and there. Later, they, they tried to get people come in well. In the beginning, the, the, the ladies were so scared because the picket line, they couldn't go in. But after that, they did. They came in. When the strike was over, they called you as a scab. I didn't, I didn't like the attitude. So instead of staying there and be miserable, working with them, they're not happy, I stayed home. I didn't go back to the cannery. Then you came back to the cannery in 1948. Why did you decide to come back? I was enjoying in the beginning, you know. I went back, but they changed their attitude. They were good, oh. yeah. Margaret Nona Chang was born in Waialua, Oahu in 1909, the daughter of a Japanese carpenter. When she was 20, she married Thomas Chang and stayed at home to raise three children. In 1937, she began working as a packer for the Hawaiian Pineapple Company. And five years later, she became a forelady for the night shift. She held various jobs at Hawaiian Pine until she retired in 1973. I was wondering, you know, since you're Japanese and, you know, wartime, some Japanese had hard time certain jobs. Only thing we didn't have too many different nationalities in a cannery. That's it's it. more Japanese here. Yeah. So uh, in those days you used to talk Japanese sometimes? Yeah. yeah. I spoke Japanese and I could speak Chinese a little bit. Uh -huh. So when I used to work in the office, they said, No, no, nah, Chinese, Chinese. I said, Me not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I used to tell Mr. Healy, I said, You know, Mr. Healy, you're supposed to pay me extra for interpreting. <laughs> in 1946, the union came in, huh? Mm -hmm. What did you think? What did you know about the union back in 46? Just that they had union and then certain, certain, a lot going to be our, your our union steward and all uh -huh. that, you know. Uh -huh. It didn't bother us too much. When were you asked to become a member of the union? When you're intermittent, they ask you uh -huh. to be a member uh -huh. and you sign up. So and, then, and then you, for a while, and then they'll ask you, oh, be a union steward. I said, no, I have enough troubles of my own without mm. getting into that. Some of these people, they always gripe in and they always come up with minor things that they, this and that, this and that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go, go back to the union with all those minor <laughs> details and bother them when they have so many other things to do. Huh? During those times, you know, 40s, 50s, people used to worry about the union because they'd say, oh, communists or something. No. Never bothered you. Later on, you know, in 47, you have your first strike. Mm -hmm. What did you do during the strike? They tell you, oh, the strike for you to report down there and uh, pick it, that's all. And we, mm -hmm. what, it was like a picnic, I think. <laughs> it was like a picnic? Why do you say that? It was like a Everybody picnic. Everybody's joking and they're singing and then they, mm -hmm. Uh, walking around in a little circle. What's it, uh, we didn't pick it all the way. We just pick it by the gate that we went in, I think. Uh -huh. and then you uh -huh. just go around and they're talking and they're laughing. Some reading paper uh -huh. and they have the radio on or this, uh -huh. some Japanese people, they're uh -huh. singing songs. It wasn't for the day. There's so many hours you go. 
Uh-huh. Maybe you seven to eight or eight to nine, they give you hours and you go out. Were you worried? It only lasted five and a half days, but were you worried in no. any way about what would happen? Do you no. know why you folks were striking? We just follow. You just follow. <laughs> you just got an increase of 10 cents per hour, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think about the strike after you got that result? Well, we didn't think anything much of it. I think when we went back to work, everybody would say, oh, certain, certain person came in to work, you know. Uh-huh. Not talk to them, they're scared. Uh-huh. And this and that. But for our part, we didn't care. Mm-hmm. Because that was their business. But they themselves felt guilty. And they mm-hmm. held back for a long time. To us, it didn't matter. If they want to go in, fine, let them work. But uh, they themselves felt gu- guilty for going into work. Uh, crossing the picket line. Venezia Guayala was born in Batac, Ilocos Norte, in the Philippines in 1913. She received a college degree and taught English, Tagalog, and home economics in barrio schools. In 1947, she met Ruperto Guayala, who had returned home from working in the pineapple fields on Lanai, and they got married. She left her teaching job a couple of years later to join her husband on Lanai. He was transferred to Dole Company's Wahiwa Plantation in 1952, and four years later she began working in the fields as a seasonal employee. During the 1968 pineapple strike, she became president of the Dole Whitmore ILWU Women's Auxiliary, an organization of women field workers. Its purpose was to help picketing workers. In 1968, the year of the uh, 61 day strike, you helped organize the Dole Whitmore IOWU Women's Auxiliary. Yes. Can you tell me something about that? The men needed help from the women. So they suggested that the women should have their uh, group also for the picket line. The chairman of the, the union wanted us to have a meeting. He just said, everybody go to the clubhouse and we have a meeting. And then when we were older, he told us the purpose to set, to elect one chairman so that uh, we have this women's group. When my name was uh, nominated, I refused, but they said you can. That's when I was elected. What was the actual function of the organization? Uh, we have to pick it also. We have to divide the groups into seven groups because there are seven days in a week. Some works on Monday up and other group, another kind, up to Sunday. We go to the picket line, we serve juice, we have to go and report to the headquarters to clean to clean the building. And when we get soup kits and for I think one or two one week, we have to go there and peel some potatoes, clean the vegetables that they cook. How many women were there in, in your organization? I don't remember already, but more than hundred. Did any women refuse to participate? Some women are tricky. They said they are sick. But we have to send the sergeant at arms to check because they don't like to, they complain about their gas money to come. But that is the part of the job. If you get gas money when you come to work, you don't have gas money when we are on strike. So they come. What time did you wake up to go to work? Sometimes I get up at 3.30. Early in the morning. In order to prepare the lunch, the, la- uh, the children to go to school, to bring them to the babysitter, to feed the pets. How important was your income that you got as part, to be part of the family budget? Oh, it's important. We have to pay the note of our house already, plus the light and the uh, water. Okay. And my husband only get that much, maybe we survive with his own pay, but I like to have a little bit saving for the future of the children too, because we like them go to school. Saving and building for the future of the family, including education as a key to a better life. That's a theme that comes through a number of these interviews, from first and second generation immigrants to native Hawaiians. All of these interviews were conducted in 1979.
for the Center for Oral History at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. This is Bill Dorman with Hawaii Public Radio.